Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand. Today we're visiting in the studios of Victor Pacheco, who is an amazing, multi-talented, multi-material artist. Uh, and I'm hoping we're going to have time to show you a lot of his work today. He is a graduate of the Rhode Island School of Design. He has uh, his MFA from RISD, and he has an undergraduate BFA from Hartford University, uh, University which, was, Hartford, yeah. which was in sculpture. Sculpture, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. he's also the recipient, recipient of numerous awards and fellowships, one from the prestigious Skohegan School of Sculpture and Painting, and uh, I congratulate you on the amount of work you've done. It's it's amazing the length of his resume and the different bodies of work that he's done. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you, and uh, anxious to show the audience what you do. Well, so, thank you for coming, Victor. I'm <laughs> glad to <laughs> glad you. to be here. Uh, you're you're somewhat new to the area, are you not? Yes, I am. Uh, just moved here uh, with uh, my wife Melanie um, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. So uh, and then. Uh, and where were you before that? We were in Rochester, New York. Oh. And so we've been moving for quite a bit for the last uh, five years. Uh, my wife is a physician here in the area, and so um, she was doing her residency in Rochester, New York. I see. And so we were there during that time. I see. But you have also a history in Hartford as well. Yes. Actually, I grew up in Hartford and um, spent, I guess, most of my life there. I mean, uh, I was born in Puerto Rico, in Fajardo, um, but um, my family soon moved to uh, Connecticut. How uh, old were you then? I think, uh, I mean, we kind of moved back and forth after I was born. Um, and I think uh, early, maybe one or two. So you basically grew up in Hartford. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's been a lot of turmoil in your life for the last few years, I guess. <laughs> Just uh, moving, a lot of <laughs> moving can be very stressful. <laughs> Plus, you have a new baby daughter that's not, uh, what, you said 18 months? Yeah, 18 months. And so. So this keeps him hopping, I'm sure. <laughs> it, you know, that is one of the issues that artists have to deal with is how to have a life and do your work at the same time. It's not easy. It's uh, not easy at yeah. all. Well, I, I call it part of the territory, so. Yeah, yep. it all comes together at some point, hopefully. And, uh, but you've done amazing things. And um, I, uh, how did you decide to be a sculptor? What, what drew you to sculpture? What, did you ever think of being a painter? Um, actually, I started uh, with the interest in painting. And um, first two years of undergrad, um, I did a lot of the foundation courses for um, At painting. Hartford yep. University. At University of Hartford. And um, sophomore year, I just had a transition. I took a 3D course um, and really loved it. And um, just transferred over and started taking classes more geared for sculpture. Mm -hmm. so. One of the things I always loved about sculpture or learning about making sculpture is that you learn about materials. You really learn about how things work and how, what their properties are and how they can be put together. And plus you do work with technology as well where you're using electronics and video and all these other things, which again, these days is part of a sculpture curriculum, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's actually, um, I mean, uh, there's more traditional forms of sculpture that don't use that as much. But um, I think I like the immediacy of being able to um, affect a material and see a direct change. Um, and then using technology just gives me a, a chance to create a connection between what's happening in the world and, and an object. And, mm -hmm. and so I use it in that way. Does the material dictate what form you come out with? Um, sometimes, for the most part, I, uh, I do research-based work, and so I, I look closely at different objects that um, pertain to issues that I'm interested in, um, and then slowly, you know, deviate from that original object. Um, but for the most part, uh, I have an object in mind, and then it changes due to the change of ideas more. Okay. 
and your work is very much about ideas and very much about it also has a certain social and uh, should, should dare I say political you know there's that aspect of reflecting our culture and our environment and all of that in your work is that not true yes um, it's a bit subtle I mean uh, I start with that idea and then somehow things evolve and may stay true to that idea and then sometimes they change entirely mm -hmm. and so it becomes about something else. So that idea is what gets you going on a particular body of work but then as you work through those ideas this, the forms can change and evolve into other, other forms. Yes, other ideas. Um, yeah. yeah it's, it's about you know learning um, and sort of being uh, influenced by the different things you learn and so mm -hmm. you know something else might sort of creep into the work based on whatever it is that that's the best out. thing a good artist you I think you can always tell because it's solving problems and taking an idea and looking at it in a hundred different ways and seeing what the material offers and how it can go and that's the excitement of it. It's never boring or dull, and you certainly don't crank out the same thing over and over again, that's for sure. <laughs> so that's very exciting. Now, I wanted to hear a little bit about the murals, too. So I originally started with murals. Um, I started, and this was uh, during undergrad, um, had sort of this uh, fascination with, you know, murals and sort of the interaction you get when you're working on a mural outside and um, in direct contact with the community and how that can possibly change what you're doing on a wall. And so I started with that and then it you know, became a small business in a way. Um, and then I, I shortly found out that it was not a way to make money, um, for me at least. Uh, the murals I, were, I was making were very personal um, and sort of connected with the community. And so, uh, find, you know, financing a mural under that scope, um, there's not a lot of support for that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it became a little challenging and mm -hmm. I, I started to move on into, as, as I started to like three-dimensional work, then the murals sort of took a back seat. Mm -hmm. This piece, or some pe works like it, I actually first saw over at the Sprinkler Factory in the Indoor Games Show which is where I met Victor. He's, uh, he came onto the radar uh, not too long ago because he, you may remember, he won the Best in Show Award at the Arts Worcester Biennial. And that was uh, another piece we're gonna show you. But these pieces fascinated me and the way you use material is just amazing. What are these made out of? This is styrofoam. And so I, got, I was really lucky. I, I'm always looking for stuff on the side of the road. Uh, and I stumbled upon a four by four by 10 foot piece of foam that someone put out um, because they didn't uh, need it anymore. They wanted to get rid of it. Yeah, and so it was a piece of a foam originally used to float a dock. So you won't believe this because it looks like slate or metal like something from the World Trade Center, you know, some kind of wild metal twisted form, but it's actually light as a feather and made of styrofoam. <laughs> and so, yeah, this is a body of work I'm, I'm almost done with, a uh, total of about 20 to 25 pieces. Wow. Um, you know, the, the thing that takes the longest is making these towers mm -hmm. um, that sort of uh, mm -hmm. encroach upon Why the Why do you feel like you need the towers? Um, well, the towers were the sole purpose of the beginning of the piece. And so I was doing some research on hydraulic fracturing um, and what the process is like. And so this is sort of a, a more elaborate version of what a, a tower looks like when they erect a drill site um, to do some hydraulic fracturing. And so I found some of these forms to be very interesting in terms of uh, the three-dimensionality of it. Um, and then these pieces resemble, you know, part, a chunk of the earth. And so it, it's off scale a bit. Um, and so I think the towers sort of uh, keep in line with my original thought. Um, and then they relate it to... About the environment and then... But I, aesthetically, I really like the idea of the man-made geometric in, 
integrated or opposing all that organic power. You know, there's a very nice balance between the two opposites, which I find has a tension and makes the work more interesting. Uh, not, you know, the grid of this with the flow of this is very lovely, beautiful to me. But uh, okay. you have some other pieces I want to show with the uh, drill bit where it actually moves. Victor does a lot of things with electricity where they have moving parts. And um, that is that about drilling for water or is that? Well, that's actually about um, drilling for oil. Okay. And so um, it's a smaller piece. It was actually a study for some drawings and things like that. And so it was one of the um, first sort of smaller kinetic pieces I made. Right. Um, okay. So how do you form the styrofoam? So I use wire um, and uh, heated wire Okay. Um, to basically carve away at a piece of foam. So you're pulling this big wire through the foam and it's cutting as it... Right. Amazing. I mean, it's, it's you Amazing. know, depending on the size of the foam, yeah. Um, you can have something that's stable that you can kind of run the foam through, or you can have something that you're using both arms. And so... Can I pick this up? Sure. Now here's a piece that is un unfinished, that is, uh, you can just see the styrofoam, but so you're putting coats of different layers of paint and... Yeah, this is actually latex paint. Um, and I use another uh, type of... Uh, chemical to coat over that so it gets a harder feel and it doesn't uh, break as easily. Ah, so it actually stabilizes the styrofoam a bit. Yeah, and I mean, this is different kind of foam. This is a, a higher density foam um, and so it is more stable in terms of it mm -hmm. flaking off, mm -hmm. um, you know, which makes it more durable, makes it better. Mm -hmm. um, Some of these have moving parts too, don't they? Didn't you have one in the uh, sprinkler factory that had like elevators going up and coming yes. down. And it, was, it was really very interactive. Well, I recognize this piece because this is the piece that you had in the uh, Arts Worcester Biennial that got the Best in, best in Show Prize. <laughs> oh, yes, it did. Yeah, what, what is it made out of? This is foam. This is uh, the kind of foam they use between the sill of a house and the foundation. Um, I stumbled upon a roll of it uh, looking for some material and then I had to, <laughs> it's fairly light, uh, uh -huh. and so I had to, when I started this, I ran out of some of that, so I had to go and get some more. And I, I know, know the kind you mean, though. It, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, now, you realize this is dissembled. It, it, he has his coat under there keeping, you like, take things apart when you bring them home from shows. Yes. And you realize he has to store these giant pieces, and some of them are really colossal in scale. And uh, his, he has two workspaces here. Uh, this workspace has a section for all, he does so many varied kinds of things, you have to have a lot of different setups for different kinds of materials with wood and foam and uh, metals and all kinds of things. But you have an electronic setup and so forth. It's amazing. What was the concept behind this piece? So this is, um, uh, I call it Peace Bird. Um, and it originally started um, when there was a commentary in the, some of the presidential debates about um, Big, Big Bird and Sesame Street oh, not being yes. funded. Oh, yes. And so as a sort of a, a comedic thought, you know, I, I started this piece and then sort of it evolved into having a grenade as an egg and so um, you know, kind of deviated from the original thought, but um, there it is, a uh, big bird. <laughs> uh -huh. And imagine with this big wing coming out, it's much more colossal even then. I'm like a kid in a candy store here. I don't know where to look <laughs> next. He's got all these workstations set up, like this one. What are you working on here? These are pieces of uh, cherry burl wood. Um, and so I'm doing some experiments with uh, these channels into the wood. Um, you know, same theme, uh, hydraulic fracturing. And so I'm able to um, router in some of these spaces and then uh, work with color. So in this sense, the wood will be taking the place of the foam as you burrow down yes. into... I gotcha. Yes. And then I thought this was really interesting because you're saying these are the things you cut 
the foam with? Yes. These wires, the it's like a saw. And yeah, I mean, these, uh, I make some of these tools, um, and it's basically wire that has a connection um, to a variac that I can uh, vary the in heat intensity. Um, you know, the, the hotter it is, the smoother it so cuts. So it's not sawing, it's just melting through. Yeah, um, you know, too much heat will, will give you a lot of smoke and uh, not so great of a cut, but other than that, it works it's really well. It's all learning about how it wants to go <laughs> and how, it, how much is too much. Or here's another, oh, wow, this weighs a ton. <laughs> I was just noticing this, and you, you do casting. You've done metal casting, and you've made uh, forms of, this is rubber that you've, what was this for? That's for, I did some birds uh, a couple years ago, um, and so that's the, I molded the head of a rooster out of wax, uh -huh. and then basically created a, a mold around it so I can do more than one. Where was that bird head? Oh, here, is this it? Yeah. Look, isn't this amazing? This creature with a, that's a beautiful thing in itself. Mm -hmm. But imagine, you know, doing casting, metal foundry work. Uh, you just amaze me that you have such a depth of experience with materials. We're up in Victor's second studio space now, and this is more of your showroom, right? It's a cleaner space to, to work out <laughs> it's of. It's not the nitty gritty <laughs> workspace. He has his electronic setup up here where he does little weldings and wirings and all that kind of business. But what we decided to do is show you some of the works uh, online. Uh, and by the way, he has a terrific website. You can see multiple bodies of work. It's uh, wonderful. So let's uh, look at some, and then we can show the audience what, uh, what we're looking at. Okay, so this is a piece called Encased, and it's basically a seven foot by four foot uh, frog. Seven uh, foot? Yes. I, I saw the little model. I thought that was it. Oh, yeah, no, the, the little models are uh, studies I use to... To make larger work. I see. And so, um, now what is that made out of? This is fiberglass resin. Um, it's a foam interior. So basically everything was carved out of foam and then protected with a um, uh, coat of um, latex. And then I could put the resin on that so it wouldn't affect mm -hmm. the uh, So the, this the is foam. a big leaping frog. Was yes. there some significance in the content of making the frog? At the time I started this uh, looking at frogs and how they're um, affected by their environment. Um, a lot and, have been endangered because of mutations and things, right, have they right. not? So it's, it's basically that same theme that I was looking at. Um, and the purpose of a large frog is, you know, calling attention to that mm -hmm. a bit. And then the, the surface treatment of it uh, makes it look like it's some kind of metallic or metal or, mm -hmm. or sheet metal or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, with the commentary that it should be protected. Ah. Um, so it's, it's encased. Let's see another um, one because I, I'm hoping we're going to get through many of them. Um, so this uh, restating touch was something that was fairly recent and it basically uh, three to six met metal frames that were strung um, where people can interact with it. So you, you I pull actually the got to play with this one and it was fun. <laughs> it was in the indoor games show. <laughs> And so uh, you, you plug the strings and you get a visual of what that frequency is. The vibration of the strings gives you a visual, um, a color visual uh, that the projection basically shows up on the opposite wall. Wow, um, yeah, that was lovely. And the colors moved along the wall as you, yeah, it was really nice. Um, and then uh, some other pieces I have. Extraction Site um, is a series of uh, works, small and large. Um, and are basically samples just like the one we have right behind us here. Um, Which is a teeny tiny one. Oh, it, uh, it's working now too. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this uh, going up and down. It's like a, like, looks like an oil drill. Yeah, so it's an oil pump. Um, and uh, I was looking at how these work. Um, and not here in the Northeast, but further west, you get to see a lot of these. Um, wherever there's you know oil on the ground that they're pumping out um, and so I started looking at this as a commentary 
Um, so this one is basically pumping air. There's nothing beneath here, and it, mm -hmm. it's an exaggeration. It's sort of, you know, it's, a nice, mm -hmm. it's sitting on an iceberg. It's interesting the way you do a similar idea on many different scales. You know, I think that is interesting in and of itself. Like this big one that is so monstrous, you know, it, it, it's much more threatening than the small scale. I mean, that looks like some kind of axe attacking the earth, you know. It, I mean, it's a very different experience than a small thing like that, right, which right. is more toy-like almost, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I find both these um, size is interesting because one allows me to explore, um, you know, different motors and how things work. Um, and then the other one basically allows me to explore content mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, figure out what the theme, mm -hmm. how the theme is going to work. Mm -hmm. It also almost has like an organic presence too, like a large animal pecking, you know, like on four legs. Yeah. Let's take another. Okay. Um, Imagine and, getting all those motors to work in a whole line. And so um, the mo uh, mold you showed downstairs of the rooster, um, these are two fighting roosters um, that I uh, set up, and this was looking at the theme of indirect violence. And so the practice of um, cockfighting and how um, these roosters are trained to do this sort of uh, violent deed to each other. Um, and it has some imagery on the, the um, skin of the rooster um, looking at fighter planes, and so comparing the two. Can we show a second version? Yeah. I wanted you to see the close-up. Do another. There's the head of the bird that you saw the cast of in the basement. But do you see how these are also like airplanes, aren't they? Yeah. They're, so it's a commentary on like a fighter jet. Um, and a fighter cock and the similarities between those two things. Oh, I love this one. I love this one. So these were pieces that I participated in um, Connecticut, the first night activities, and this was a piece... In Worcester? In Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford. Um, this was a piece uh, dealing with uh, 48 hours of artwork. And so I basically got some volunteers and constructed this form, um, and it dealt with uh, looking at reflection and so you'd be looking at you'd step into this and there would be some questions projected on the ground dealing with reflection so questions yes, written for, word things yeah so people could sort of read these things and reflect and think about the year that so passed. many meanings for the word reflect um, and so these are some pieces when I was doing bronze casting Wow and you set that foundry set up yourself uh, I or was did, that at RISD? Um, I did some foundry work at University of Hartford um, and then afterwards uh, teamed up with a, a friend and we set up a small foundry um, in the studio space where we had in, in Rochester, New York. And that's bronze, right? Yeah, and we poured a few uh, pieces of bronze in, in that small foundry. Wow. So. Okay. And of course, with bronze, you have to make the little model and then make the cast and then, oh boy, it's a long process. This is a close-up of these uh, shells that are suspended in midair right. as though they're all going every which way. Yeah. And then show the distant shot of it so they get the idea. The, uh, so, and here you see the bullets hanging from in this huge, huge space and firing in every direction but what i love about it is it looks like a flock of birds or or what else i mean it's uh it's just wonderful yeah uh, it's actually um the light being focused on it shows the image of a gun i just noticed that now and so i didn't yeah. notice that the i did first a time series of it. pieces dealing with violence and and um, yeah you know thinking about it as an act and and so the bullets are hung in the formation of a figure, of a flat figure laying. Is and this so the, the, the flat figure laying? The yes. Upper yeah. sh and then the shadow casts as the shadow of a gun? Yes. And so oh my word. There are so many images there. You know, you can imagine bullets flying through the air. You can, it, it's just, and yet sort of transcending that into these, uh, the flying things. Okay, let's go to another. 
think that was pretty much. This one uh, of the, are those avocados? Yeah, that's a project I did uh, while living in Connecticut, um, seeing if uh, people could grow avocados and, and looking at um, using the, the internet as a source to connect this. And so I sent an email out, mass email, asking people if they were interested and then um, people would grow them. And the idea was to show this um, as an installation somewhere. Um, but with, you know, dealing with things that are alive, it's not so predictable. So some of that didn't work out. But that's a wonderful concept in that you're having life happening simultaneously in a similar way in different places and everyone being able to share the event. It's, it's really a lovely idea. I really enjoyed looking at your work and learning about all the different kinds of things you do. And uh, I want to thank you. I also wanted to let people know that Victor's website is wonderful. And you can see many, many pieces of each of these different groups, uh, bodies of work. What is the website address? Uh, it's vicpacheco.com. Just vicpacheco.com. P-A-C-H-E-C-O. E-C-O. And uh, you can see a lot of other things about them there as well. So uh, thanks so much. Uh, is there anything else you want to mention? Anything coming up in the uh, near future? I think we're pretty good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas. Mm -hmm.